Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm going to show you how to boot your Raspberry Pi from USB without an SD card. Now, you can use an external drive, either a mechanical drive, an SSD, or a USB stick. Now, I'm using this SSD with a little adapter here. It's a powered adapter, and I really wouldn't recommend this, so I'm not going to leave a link for this one here, because I did have some issues with a different SSD and this whole method here. But this Kingston does work, and it's actually really, really fast. But before we get into it, a word of warning, do this at your own risk. We're going to be flashing the EE prompt built into the Raspberry Pi 4, and there is a chance of damaging your Raspberry Pi 4. I've personally done this to three Pis already, and I haven't had any issues, but I still had to throw that warning out there. Now, in order for all this to work, we need to install Raspbian on an SD card. We're going to be doing it all from the SD card at first, then we'll transfer everything over to our SSD or our USB drive. If you don't know how to flash Raspbian, I have tons of tutorials. You can download Etcher or the official Raspberry Pi imager, download the Raspbian image from the Raspberry Pi website, and flash it to the SD card. Once you have that up and running, let's go ahead and boot up our Raspberry Pi 4, and we'll jump right into it. Alright, so let's go ahead and get our Raspberry Pi set up for USB booting. Like I said, I do have a text file listed in the description of this video. You can go ahead and download it and transfer it to your Pi. It'll just make it easier. You can copy and paste all of these commands in. We're going to open up a terminal. I'm going to get this situated over here and zoom in a bit. First thing we need to do is an update. So we'll do sudo apt update, press enter, and you need to be connected online for any of this to work. You can use Ethernet or Wi-Fi. Next, we're going to do an upgrade. So we'll do sudo apt upgrade. Press Y and enter. So once the upgrade's done, we need to do an RPI update. Now this is really where the do it at your own risk comes into play. We're going to start this now. We'll have to do a reboot and then we're going to get right into flashing the EEPROM or the EEPROM. So we're going to type in sudo RPI update. Press enter. Yes, we would like to proceed. Press Y. Now that we have all that done, we need to type in sudo reboot. We're going to go ahead and reboot the system. So we've rebooted. We got a fully upgraded system. It's time to flash the EEPROM or the EEPROM. So from terminal, we're going to type in sudo apt install rpi EEPROM. Press enter. Now we need to make one change. So from here, we're going to type in sudo nano etc default rpi eprom update. And from here, we're going to go over to where it says critical. And we're going to change this to beta. Press control X, Y, and enter. And now we need to install the update that supports boot from USB. So it's this command right here. I have it on screen and in the description. Press enter. It's asking us to reboot. So we can type in sudo reboot. Now we need to check two things. Our EEPROM version. VC Gen CMD bootloader version. And we'll make sure it's the May 15th release. This will change in the future and I will update the uh, text file to reflect those changes. And we're going to take a look at the bootloader config. VC Gen CMD bootloader underscore config. From here, you want to make sure boot order is set to 0xf41. 4 is for USB, 1 is for SD card. So we're ready to go. And the easiest way to test this is to go ahead and close everything down. We're going to pull the SD card out of our Raspberry Pi 4, use a micro SD card USB reader, and plug it in there to one of the USB ports. Then I'm going to show you how to flash your external drive, but right now we just want to test that it's going to boot from USB. So we're going to use the SD card we already have programmed to do that. All right, so this is a quick and easy test to tell if everything went okay. We're going to go ahead and pull our SD card out and we're going to plug it into a micro SD card USB reader. I'm going to plug this into one of the USB 3.0 ports on the Pi. And as you can see, I do not have an SD card in this unit. I'm going to plug power in. If you have a little light on your adapter, it should start flashing. 
Just give it a little time to make sure your Raspberry Pi boots from USB, and if everything goes okay, I'm going to show you how to flash a drive very easily on your Raspberry Pi. We're just going to clone the SD card we already have set up to the new drive. It can be a USB drive, or a USB SSD, or a mechanical drive if you want to use that but we need to make sure that this is gonna boot from USB and it looks like this one's gonna work. There we have it. So we're now booting from USB on the Raspberry Pi with no SD card at all. Now I'm gonna shut the Raspberry Pi down properly. I'm gonna stick the SD card back in it and we're gonna clone that SD card to a new drive. All right, so now that we know everything went okay, it's time to clone our SD card to our new external drive. You can do this with a USB drive or an external hard drive. I'm using a 250 gigabyte SSD. I'm gonna head up here to the little Raspberry Pi icon, go to accessories, and we have an SD card copier. From the SD card copier, we're gonna copy from our SPCC. This is gonna be our SD card. And we wanna copy to a different device. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my SSD. So we're gonna go from our SPCC, and I have my external drive plugged in, Jmicron generic. This is that SSD with a USB adapter. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that's checked. Click start. Yes, everything on that new drive is going to be wiped. And we'll let this finish up. Once this is done, all we need to do is pull our SD card out and we can boot from that drive over USB. All right, our copy is complete. We now have that SD card cloned to the new drive we're using. I'm using that 250 gigabyte SSD with a powered USB adapter. I'm going to go ahead and shut this down properly, and we'll move back over to my other monitor. And the moment of truth, I have the SSD plugged into one of the USB 3.0 ports on the Raspberry Pi. Remove the SD card, plug it in, and it'll boot right up. Everything will be running from the SSD. We do not need an SD card inserted in a Raspberry Pi 4. I can tell you right now that boot times are a lot faster, especially with an SSD. If you're using a USB drive, they might be on par with that SD card. But everything's been working great so far, and we're now booting from a USB 3.0 device instead of the micro SD card. It's completely removed from the Raspberry Pi 4. But yeah, that's about it for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I have tested this booting from a USB pen drive. It was a USB 3.0 pen drive. It seemed to be on par with the micro SD card speed but it's nowhere near as fast as an external SSD. And the SSD I'm using here is a little 250 gigabyte Kingston SSD. I did try a Western Digital Blue 250 and I ran into nothing but issues. I could get it to boot up the first time, but the next time I tried it, it just wouldn't work. I've tested this Kingston over and over and it boots every single time. I really don't think it has anything to do with the Western Digital SSD. I believe it's my USB adapter I have here. This is a cheap, generic J-Micron USB adapter that's powered from the wall. And I have ordered a new, higher quality version, so hopefully that works with the Kingston. But right now with this J-Micron, it's been really sketchy. And by the way, this does not disable booting from the micro SD card. If you ever need to go back to a micro SD card, just slap it in there and unplug your external drive. But that's it for this one. All links for everything that I mentioned are in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.